Hello, my soccer universe. Well, Europe's biggest competition, not in terms of prestige, but in terms of clubs participating, is upon us. It starts in uh, today in the evening uh, with already a full slate of games. And like for the Champions League, who always takes a little time to stretch out, and that's why I always say use the nine o'clock, uh, not the nine, the seven o'clock kick off uh, to splice in a few Europa League games as well to make it a little bit more manageable. You know, take take two groups for Tuesday, two groups for Wednesday, or maybe you can even have Wednesday, whatever. Just don't have it all at once. It's a lot to take in, uh, especially if, since I personally like the Europa League. Uh, it's a lot to take in. Um, and I think it will also give a little bit more value to the second competition. Now that we have three competitions next uh, season, you cannot put everything on Thursday. You have to, I liked in the old, uh, old days, uh, 80s, 90s, it was that on Tuesday, you had usually the UEFA Cup, you had on Wednesday the Champions League or the European Cup and on Thursday at the Cup Winners Cup and maybe a little bit here and there shuffling around but uh, it was very much uh, split up this way and I think uh, it was all the better. You knew what, who was playing when. Uh, now I think a Champions League takes... Anyway, in our conscience the Champions League is very prominent, rightfully so, it is the best competition. But I think it takes a little bit too much space. I think there should be a bit more room made for the Europa League. Um, my personal opinion. I'm wearing, of course, last year's European Lusk away jersey with the patch. That's why I chose it. Um, I actually, as you can see, these are all the Europa League teams that are currently in the Euro Europa League that I have. More on that thought a little bit later. There is one more for sure on its way, so I'm quite excited about that. But then, yeah, one of those will have to go over there. But that's for later. That's for later how I will decide on that. Uh, it's actually, on one part, getting more jerseys for Europa League teams is not that hard because certain teams you can get even here relatively cheap, but it's mostly the Scottish Giants. I would use only them for the uh, Europa League and then I probably would have to get both at once because I personally have no favorite. I don't want to give the impression that I have a favorite there. And I don't, you know, I recognize it as one of the fiercest derbies, but I don't have any team that I support in that rivalry, to be honest. So uh, I'm uh, the rare neutral. I want to again run through all the groups. Uh, we can see who is who are the favorites according to my model. Um, again, and then we look at the favorites overall. Then we look at what the match day uh, that we have um, on Thursday already, uh, which games to watch. And yeah, um, give you maybe a little bit of my personal feeling as well with that. Let's start in Group A, Roma. Overwhelming favorites, and that's young boys, according to my model, that are ahead of Cluj and CSK Sofia. Um, I'm, yes, I would agree with Roma. I'm not so sure about young boys. I mean, yes, per se, they have been in Champions League and so on, but so has Cluj not too long ago. I Maybe I'm overestimating Cluj, but for me, Cluj is one of those teams that usually gets underestimated. Uh, for CSK, I think it's a sensation that they're in, but you know, they got rid of Basel. So, I mean, I think the latter three, it's not as, um, it's not as uneven as the model makes it look. Group B, um, I do agree it should be Arsenal and Rapid. Uh, Molde, maybe, I don't think Dundalk has any uh, chance in here. Arsenal should cruise through, through this group. And to be honest, if Rapid doesn't make fake six next spot, they deserve even more hate coming from me because that would be an absolute disaster on their part. They will for sure find an excuse because this is what Rapid is really good at. Group C. Uh, very, very interesting uh, group because uh, you had you have three teams, you have two uh, French and a German team in there, the German team Leverkusen. I would agree. They are the fa favorites, although they are had a so and so start to, to the league. Nice as a French team is not like the super French team, but you know, it's a top five league team. And then Slavia, who probably should play in the Champions League, if you're honest. So um, Leverkusen, yes, and then. Slavia and Nice, 
and we don't know what happened with Beersheba will do uh, with all the COVID situation in Israel. Uh, Group D has actually a few big names with Benfica and <laughs> it kind of seems weird to have Benfica in the Europa League, but let, let, let's see with Porto in the Europa League. So yeah, uh, Standard de Liege, Rangers and uh, Lech Poznan. Benfica and Rangers sound like the teams that to beat in here, but Standard Liege always had a surprise in the, in the Europa League, so I wouldn't count them out uh, as for the Polish team. I don't give them much chance, but you know, in the Europa League, you never know with what teams uh, those clubs are playing, so we have to see as well. And this is a big caveat. This is assuming that they're all playing with the first uh, teams, which we know, for instance, for Milan. Milan will not play with the first team. They will actually shuffle around a little bit, which I think is legitimate overall. Um, Group E, PSV, Pau, Granada, Omonia. Yes. Uh, from the name it should be PSV, but Granada is a Spanish team that is actually doing quite well at the moment. As I said, I have my worries a little bit for, 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 for them that if they get too much into Europe, that this might affect them in the league. Um, I think I totally agree it's a three-headed race. I think that Granada is not as far removed from the other two as it is in there. Omonia is ranked outside us. Group F is probably one of the most loaded ones uh, with Napoli and Real Sociedad who both, sh if everything goes by plan, they should cruise through that one. Uh, Z is not that great uh, this time around. I mean, Lask beat them even when they had a good team uh, fight, fighting for the Dutch Championship last season, which got then abandoned. So I honestly think it's Napoli and Real Sociedad. Both teams, I mean, Napoli is rolling at the moment, Real Sociedad is not too far behind. Group G, uh, Leicester, Towers overall, I think Ike has a chance against Braga, uh, Zoria, Luhansk, you know, Ukrainian teams that are not called Shakhtar or Dynamo are usually uh, a little bit of cannon fodder. Group H, yes, Milan do dominates that one, but I honestly think this is a wide open group. Um, Sparta Pra probably really uh, down, but Milan's rating I think is too high, as I said, they will probably play uh, more with a second string team in there. This might be enough to get a draw uh, at Celtic or at Lille and so on. And maybe if it's uh, push comes to shove, they can uh, pull in the big names. But honestly, I have ha I have had to say I find this rather open. Um, Sparta with outside chances, but I think it's a three way race between Celtic, Milan, and Lille. And I personally would love if Milan finally wins the Europa League because then they have the full set of European trophies, which they should have. Uh, anyway, I think Milan should have won it in 96. Um, still don't get how they lost to Bordeaux. Another story. Uh, but yeah, they have the Cup Women's Cup, they have the Champions League, the Europa League or UEFA Cup. That's the one that's missing. I would love for Milan to have it. I don't think it will be this season, uh, but I would be glad if I am proven wrong here. Uh, we are uh, heavily favored and then yeah um, Turkish teams are not all that great at the moment so we have uh, Karabakh and Maccabi Tel Aviv I probably agree with that that those two will play but uh, we also know now that no games will be played in uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia to the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict so that's interesting Group J, Lask's group Yes, Lask is favorite. No, absolutely not. Uh, it's Spurs all the way. Uh, Spurs look impressive. Spurs should toy with this group. Uh, and then it's the three way race uh, with probably Lou, Lou, Goretz um, having a little bit more experience there. But you know, I like Lask's chances of advancing there. Group K, um, very deceiving group because they're, you would say the only big name there is Feyenoord, and even that has been of late not that big. Um, and as you can see in the model, it's the two Eastern teams, CSK Moscow and Dinamo Zagreb, that are uh, favored. Don't underestimate Wolfsburg. Austrian teams are not to be underestimated. They beat Gladbach away from home last season. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think they could make an upset, but probably it's CSK and then, yeah. Let's see how it goes. I really don't want to call it. I think it all was because underrated in the ratings that I got. And then uh, the last group, uh, Hoffenheim. I will, uh, I would agree in the approach of Venus Vesta. Mm, I have not seen them, but given what they have been doing the last two seasons, I think Javenas Vesta should get out of the, this group. Ghent was not too impressive in qualifying. 
Now, you see already in these values, like with, with the Champions League, in the right column, there's also the percentage of win. But we look at 12 groups and I don't know how, how many of you kept track uh, of the chances of winning. Let's look at it. Who are the top 20 teams to win the Europa League? And believe it or not, there are many teams. The top 20 is by far not enough. At the moment, it is Napoli ahead of Spurs, ahead of Arsenal. If you know anything about how I arranged the um, jerseys back there, you would have already guessed it. And Napoli, Spurs, Arsenal and then Milan. Uh, actually in fifth place, because I don't have Real Sociedad, I want to say yet, but I have not seen a good, uh, well, pr a nice looking and well priced Real Sociedad jersey, to be honest. Uh, Leverkusen is uh, on sixth place and uh, Leicester. And you know, you see it's kind of tightish. I actually would say up on the, the top 10 for sure. Uh, it's almost a toss up, but you would at the moment favor Napoli and Spurs definitely over the rest. I think those two are the top favorites. However, who could throw a wrench in there? What, what is Le Leipzig doing in there? Well, Leipzig, and this was ahead of any Champions League games uh, played. So those are the ones that could switch from Champions League in, in, in the Europa League. And we see that Leipzig were kind of a little bit odds on favorites to finish third in their group. And therefore, they are here in 11th spot. And same goes then for uh, Red Bull Salzburg, Atletico Madrid, Manchester United. And then on the bottom, we still have really big names. Bayern, PSG, Inter and Real Madrid, all with kind of toughish draws. All could end up there. Not very likely that they end up there. If you look at the um, R32 column, this is basically the uh, chance to make it into the round of 32. See, those chances are, are, are big, but their squads are so strong. And if they would fall into that, they would kind of mow through the comp comp competition, especially Bayern probably would romp through it easily. So uh, that's the interesting part of the whole thing. So yeah, those are the top 20 uh, favorites in there. And as I said, we have 32 from the Champions League, 48 from the Europa League, and all of them potentially could win the, co the competition. So it's a huge field that you have to take care of here. Um, the games, actually match day one, Young Boys Roma is already an interesting one. Uh, for Austrian and British fans, of course, uh, Rapid against Arsenal uh, sounds interesting. I don't know why it's not Leisure Rangers, could be a pretty decider. Yeah, Leverkusen Nice, that's, uh, that's already a pretty pre decider. Who, who could go? Further, uh, PSV Granada, I also top meeting uh, Napoli against AZ. Napoli needs to assert themselves. Celtic Milan sounds very tasty. These are two former Champions League winners. Yes, Celtic won it also. Uh, so looking forward to that one. Of course, my focus will be on Spurs, Lusk, and I hope that Lusk can at least hang longer in there than West Ham did. West Ham came back. I hope Lusk came back, came back. We're uh, scoring five and a half goals per game at the moment in the Europa League qualification in two games. I'm afraid this this could get ugly. This could, could get ugly. I like how my team is doing, but when I see Spurs in such good form as I saw it at the beginning of West Ham, Trauner, our captain, he has great vision and anticipation, but he's not fast. And if he gets in a one-to-one -one with Son, there's only one winner. Or oh, Bergman or Kane. So yeah. Uh, but that's where my attention will Anyway, let me know what games you'll be watching. What do you think of the favorites as I have it outlined here? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.